Hey guys, Dilby here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at Progressive House, the kind of deep rolling style of Progressive House that you'll find on labels like Sudbeat, Meanwhile, Replug, that type of thing. Some of the artists you'd associate with this are like Alex Orion, GMJ and Matter, Sid Inc. Loads more actually, there's a, there's a big scene around it. So this style of Progressive House kind of takes influence from Deep House, Organic House and a bit of melodic techno, but not so much as like what you would find on Bedrock or something like that, which these days is a lot more techno focused. I found it really interesting when getting into this project because I noticed a lot of parallels between the kind of deep and clubby house stuff that I do and this kind of music even though they sound quite different. A lot of the techniques kind of cross over. Like always, you can download the project file, so there's a link in the description if you want to grab that. It goes to my Patreon, and Patreon is one of the best ways that you can support the channel and make sure that I keep bringing you these vids every single week. All right, enough of that. Let's jump into Ableton and make some progressive house. So here we are inside Ableton, and this is the project that I've put together for this deep, groovy prog house kind of stuff. I noticed when I was referencing tracks that there was actually a lot going on in pretty much all of the tracks, especially in the drums, but just a lot of elements in general. So that's ended up this being quite a big project. So buckle in, it's going to be a big one. Let's just take a quick listen through, and then we'll get straight into it. So there you go, as you can see, loads of stuff going on. Definitely the biggest one of these tracks that I've made since I started the channel. So let's jump in and get going with the drums like we always do. All right, so starting at the top, we've got a kick. So this kick I sampled from a track by GMJ, awesome Australian progressive house artist. You can hear it's like deep and subby with a good click on the start. It's also quite short, there's a lot going on generally in the bass, so we don't want it to take up too much space. If I show you on the Oscillos Megascope here, so there's plenty of space between that kick for the bass. Not much processing going on. All I've done is make it mono as it had a bit of stereo in the top, and then I've notched out a little bit around 300 hertz, 290 hertz. And it just helps to make it feel a little bit tighter. Very subtle, it's only a couple of dB. So it's just a standard 4-4 pattern, and also worth mentioning, we're at 122 BPM. These tracks are generally in the range between like 120, 123, maybe 124, but 120 to 123 is kind of normal. All right, claps. So I've got a couple of claps here. So the first one, is this quite splashy one, and I've taken it from a loop. And you can see it's just got like a bit of pre-hit, so in the MIDI, I've just pulled it back a little bit. Now the second one is more like a hand clap. And what I've done is over this two bar MIDI, I've just moved these slightly off the grid all at different times. So the combination of this hand clap with the nice splashy clap and the kick gives like a nice human groovy feel just to the kick and clap. 
Now the next thing I've got is this clap texture. So what I actually liked about this was the sound that happens on the first clap of the bar. So what I've done is used the gain automation on the envelopes and just accentuated that and pulled the rest down. So if I just crank this up, So it just accentuates this hit here. I could have taken everything right down, but I did like the texture that was adding. So let's hear it with the other elements. Really starts to groove, right? Now I've got a couple of snares and these could probably be in the percussion group. I might move them there, but let's have a listen. So just contrasting sounds. Uh, they've got each one is panned a little bit, five to the left, five to the right, and they're just happening kind of alternating at the end of every two bar section. So those claps and snares with the kick. So you can see we're already building up the groove. We're already starting to get like a really kind of nice rolling sound. Now I'm gonna jump into the hats. And first up, we've got this tight hat. So it's just like a simple groove playing on the downbeat and then the offbeat. This pattern is really common in disco. So it gives it this kind of funky disco-y feel, although it's clearly not a disco track. And I've just got this little skippy hit here with an extra, with an extra note on the 16th. So you can feel that starting to groove with the other elements already. Now I'll come back to this open hat. The next element I want to look at is the shakers. We've got two different shakers, left and right. So the midi and processing is exactly the same on both of them. I've just panned 125 to the left and 125 to the right and switched out the sound and slightly adjusted the volume so that they're equal volume. And this is just to give like the feeling of a shaker, but I want it to be nice and wide and have some contrast, really fill up those high ends. So the pattern here, I'm just using velocity to automate the volume and give some groove. Next, I've got this groove shaker. And what I've done here is just taken the same MIDI and turned off some of the notes. So these are just like adding some groove and accentuating some of the hits that groove along with the other drums. So let's take a listen together. So it just kind of adds to this like rolling groove. This groove shaker is actually centered down the middle. So the other ones are happening wide. This one's happening in the center. So it's kind of differentiating them again. It's also a different sound. So it's just adding real, some real texture to the high end. Then I've got this tambourine groove. So just a little difference in the pattern there. By having these small differentiations in the pattern, it really helps to extend the length. So we're actually working with loops, but we're making the loops longer. And once you start getting to like four or eight bar loops, it's long enough that your brain doesn't get fixated on the fact that it's a short loop. So it gives it a lot more longevity and allows the listener to stay engaged over a longer period of time. So let's turn those on and listen in context. So you can hear that everything is grooving together. It's kind of like happening question and answer. One plays, then the next plays, then the next plays. Now I've got this open groove hat, and this is kind of adding to that disco vibe again. So it's just about choosing the right sounds and the right length, putting them in the right place. And with all these sounds, what I'm trying to do is create contrast. Some sounds are tight and a bit more dull. Some sounds are brighter and a bit longer, and it really helps to give them their own space and their own place in the mix. Then I'm panning them to place them in the panorama and give them even more space and dynamics to the drums. Now we've got this 16th hat. So this is kind of a similar sound to the tight hat but I've added this vocoder. And on the vocoder, we've got some automation. So 
this is just helping act like a, a fixed sound type thing. Really cool effect, adds some drama and some energy to the track. Now the final hat is this open hat, and the reason I left it to last is because it's panning, so it's quite dramatic. So this is really helping to kind of give some energy in the high end, but because it's moving around, it also adds to the atmosphere. It's kind of like, you can hear it's got a bit of a tack, it's a, almost like a shaker kind of sound, but it's quite bright and higher in the mix than everything else. So now we've got like a really thick, energetic hat groove, really interesting highs in the drums. So let's have a look at the percussion. There's quite a lot going on again. I'm going to turn off this hat so we can hear what's going on. So I've got a couple of kind of groovier hits, which are these congas and toms. So we'll just play those. So they're just adding to this rolling feel. They've got a bit of low end in them. So these are going to work really well in like the intro before we bring in the bass line in the arrangement of a full track. Next I've got this tap groove, just a percussion hit. I've taken off the attack because I want it to be quite sharp. I'm just sending that to a little bit of ping pong delay. It's dotted eighth notes. This is from my standard template with drum reverb, reverb, effects reverb, dotted eighth note delay, quarter note ping pong, an effects delay. Some wide saturation for the hats, some wide saturation for the synths, and some parallel processing for the kick. I'll put a link up here to a video about my template where I go through it all in great detail. So let's have a listen to this in context. So a lot of call and response going on in the percussion as well. Now let's have a look at this metal hit. So again, just creating some variation in the different bars. And this is kind of like call and response to itself. So one pattern is calling and responding to the other. And then you'll notice in the placement with the other elements, it's calling and responding between the different elements as well. So it all again is adding to this really groovy, rolling nature of the drums. Now we've got something that's quite interesting. I've got a couple of percussion sounds with some overdrive and a lot of reverb on them. Yeah, I'm just cutting out the subs because I don't want it to interfere with the kick and the bass. But let's take a listen to what these sound like. So this is quite a big sound, but because of the reverb, it kind of feels like it's in the background. So it adds to the atmosphere and the drama of the track. The placement again is creating call and response with the rest of the drum elements. But having this with a lot of reverb on it gives it like a different space in terms of like front to back. So we're really starting to create this kind of dynamic 3D mix here. And then I've got another reverb element. So this has got call and response with the first reverb element. Really cool. Really fun making these kind of drums. You can just add like all sorts of different texture and create like this really interesting groove. So with the hats. Really tight and groovy. Now we're gonna move on to the bass. I've got two layers to the bass. One is kind of the sub, and the other is like a mid bass kind of accent. So what I'll do is actually turn off the drums so we can hear the bass groove better with the kick. So you can hear it's got reverb, delay, chorus. It's really interesting, kind of big, wide, atmospheric, but 
if I add this and make it mono, we've still got power in the sub, really important. And let's have a look how we did that. So we've got a nice groovy pattern playing D, the key of the track is D minor. It repeats over two bars, but on the second bar, we don't play this offbeat note. So it extends that loop and makes it feel longer. This is fundamentally based around a saw wave. So if I turn off oscillator two, let's just turn off this processing too. So we can see the filter is really tight down there. And then we're using a bit of filter frequency modulation with envelope two to create this like nice plucky feel on the filter. Got quite a bit of drive, but only 4% resonance. Now, if we take a look at oscillator two, this is up a semitone higher. Oscillator one was tuned down by minus 12. And I've got it on a sawtooth, but I've used the warp to create like an FM type of sound. So there's the sawtooth. So it's fundamentally still like a sawtooth, but it just gives it a bit of different texture. And so with this playing up a higher octave, it also fills out the harmonics a bit. So cool, strong bass, but nothing that special, a bit bland. Ah. I've also got a little bit of velocity randomization going on here. It's only set to eight, but let's have a look at the MIDI and you can see velocity here is affecting filter one frequency, resonance, and the amp, which is the volume. So that means when it plays a higher velocity, it's gonna be more open on the filter and a little bit louder. If we look at the MIDI, I've also used some velocity to accentuate some notes more than others. So this helps to give it some groove. And then the velocity randomization helps to give it some humanization. So next I'm adding a saturator. This just helps to add some harmonics. Then I've got an EQ cutting away any unwanted low sub, just set to 25 and it's a gentle roll off. So nothing too dramatic. Now, this is where a lot of the fun stuff is happening in the sound. So first up, we've got the dry signal coming through. This is gonna be exactly what we've already heard. Then I've got a delay channel. And here I've got a delay set to eighth notes. I've used the filter frequency to differentiate it from the original dry sound. This is set to 100% wet because we're using the mixer here to mix it in. Then I've got a sidechain compressor, which is being triggered by the dry signal here. So when this dry signal plays, it ducks out the delay. This means we're getting, getting the atmospheric groove from the delay, but the main bass is still punching straight through down the middle. So let's hear those together. Just the delay. You can hear how much more interesting and dynamic the bass sounds, right? I've also got an EQ here with a steep cut, just making sure that we're not adding any subharmonics. Next, I've got a chorus, my old favorite, Tal Chorus LX. It's a free plugin, so download it, it's awesome. I'm using some overdrive to just kind of pump up the harmonics on this one, then adding the chorus, and then again, cutting away any subs. The chorus is set to 100% wet, because we're not trying to add anything to the dry signal, which is going straight down the middle. So let's solo that. If I take the overdrive off, Sounds like nice and fizzy. If it was just on the bass by itself, it'd sound a bit over the top, but this is just really to add some kind of character and some definition to the bass. So all of those together. And then we're just side chaining with LFO tool. You can do the side chaining in any way that you want. I like LFO tool because it's super easy. And I've got this rack with just a high pass filter and that's being used in these areas here with some automation to just cut out the subs. Cool, so let's hear that with the drums. This 
super groovy, very interesting. It's got a lot of atmosphere, a lot of presence. Of this type of music, this is going to be the foundation of your track. Everything else is really the icing on the cake. We've got these bass plucks. Let's have a look. So again, we're doing the same trick of creating some differentiation in the second bar to help extend the loop. If we look at the sound design here, I actually used the same synth, I just duplicated it. And then I've messed around with the FM a little bit and also set this into halfway between a saw and a square. Just gives it a bit more grit. This oscillator is exactly the same as the other one. Then I've got this amp set to bass. So without the amp, just helps accentuate that pluckiness. I've got the presence turned way up. Then a glue compressor just to control the dynamics a bit. And I've got Tantra. I've upgraded to Tantra 2, even though I don't like it, but I realized that I recommended people buy it on YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere. Basically, it was such a good deal. So I spent 25 bucks and upgraded it for myself. If you don't have Tantra, it's amazing. You should. Keep an eye on the Plugin Alliance website. They seem to have pretty regular sales. It's normally 200 and I got it for 25. Functionally, it's actually exactly the same as Tantra 1. They've just made the interface a bit worse in my opinion. It looks more modern, but there's less contrast and less, less kind of differentiation between the different elements. It's harder to understand exactly what's going on. It just looks a bit more confusing. Some of the text is quite a bit smaller. Hopefully they'll release an update to that at some point. Anyway, I'm just using a preset called Network and I've only mixed in about 14% there. It's just giving it a bit of vibe and adding to the atmosphere. And I'm cutting out the subs because we've already got the subs handled by the first bass. Let's hear that together with the kick and then I'll bring in the drums. So you can hear there how having this kind of MIDI fill at the end, which, I've, which I'm ramping up in velocity, really helps to add some energy and kind of roll over into the next section. So because it's got no sub, it's kind of like something that should be in the melody group, but I made it from the same bass patch, so I don't know. It's up to you where you put it. Okay, let's have a look at the melodies. Again, a lot going on. So I've got this riff. I started with this one, which is just a preset from Wavetable, which I've tweaked actually quite a bit, just to get it more plucky. So let's have a listen to it. If I duplicate it, let me hit the hot swap, and we'll go back to the original preset. So I heard it and I was like, I like that sound, I like that texture, but I want it to be more plucky. So this is what we ended up with. The way I got there is basically just by messing with the amplification and filter envelopes. It's a really good way to get the sounds that you want in your tracks, especially if you're not super comfortable with sound design. I think the way to approach it is to have an idea of what you want. So you can kind of hear a timbre or a texture, a tone, anything starting with T, I guess. And then try to understand the amplification envelope that you would like. Do you want it to be pluckier? Do you want it to have a slower attack? Do you want it to have more sustain, more release? And then you can kind of go in and modify that. Next, I've just got a sample, which is playing the same MIDI, and it's basically just giving a bit more body to the sound. This one's a little bit thin. So together they work quite nicely. Now let's hear that with the other bass and the kick. So you can hear, we're still building on the groove. We're still kind of following that rolling vibe. It's just adding different textures and creating more atmosphere and more groove. So this pluck sequence is kind of like the hook, so we might actually come to that last. Uh, we've got this drone, which I made in Wavetable.
Really nice sound, kind of similar to something that might be in a Kristoff track, or actually reminds me of Camel Fat Cola. They've got a pad in there that sounds a little bit dissonant like that. So all I've done is taken two saw waves in analog. Second one is pitched up an octave, and I've just detuned them a little tiny bit, minus two, plus two there. So that already adds a little bit of dissonance. Then I've got some unison, and you can see this number on the unison going crazy. So if I turn the unison off, actually, let's just hear it. So already cool, interesting sound, right? But with the unison, that's what adds this kind of craziness to it. If I turn off the shaper. So what's this shaper doing? Okay, this creates this envelope. This is another Max for Live device, which they've integrated to modulate things within Ableton. I've set that to the unison detune amount. I just kind of messed around, trial and error, made this envelope here as to what sounded good. Then I've set the rate to go over three bars and the depth to 100%, and I messed around with the phase, added a bit of jitter, a bit of smoothness, just so that it's kind of modulating all the time, and you can see what that does to the detune amount there. You can kind of hear it's pretty stable, and then it goes and then comes back down again. So that's the effect that I was going for, and really it was just trial and error as to how to get it. I added a ping pong delay, just to add a bit more width, Just fills out the sides a little bit, gives it a bit more atmosphere. And then I've used this EQ to just cut away some of the very highs so it's not interfering with those shakers and stuff. Ah, you can hear when I take off that EQ that I've added this noise oscillator. It's very subtle, but it's adding a bit more depth and grit to the sound. Let me just minimize these so I can see both. Take off the EQ and then AB the noise. Still subtle, but it's a bit more apparent. And I've got a bit of LFO tool. Normally I have it set about here, but I just really ramped it down. So we just want some little subtle pumping. So it's just adding this kind of dissonant ambience in the background there. Not very high in the mix at all. Uh, next I've got these two growls. So what I've done with these is just found some samples. Let me show that in browser, hear it. Cool, nice sound. That's from my sample pack, Underground Shades of House. Link up here, best selling sample pack on houseofloop.com. Now what I've done is similar to the percussion atmosphere that we created before. So I'm using overdrive to really pump up the harmonics, reverb to make it big and washy, another overdrive to bring up the reverb and pump up the harmonics even more, and then just cutting out some sub LFO tool. So let's take a listen. So a really big atmospheric sound, but again, because it's got the reverb, it sits in the background and doesn't wash out the track too much. Adding a lot of vibe and personality. Now we've got Growl 2. This one I got from East End Dubs Single Hits Sample Pack from Sample Market. Let's have a listen to it. So it sounds very different. Same processing as the last one, but I've used a bit more overdrive on the second overdrive. And you'll notice here that I've pitched it down 12 semitones just to make it more of a bass sound than that kind of like lead sound that it was. So in the context. Now I've got this atmosphere pad. So what I did here is I just searched for a texture that was in the key of the track and I found this on Splice. It's just a long atmosphere texture sample. Uh, let's have a listen. So very nice, something in D minor. The way I'm using it is kind of like an effect. Let's have a listen. So 
So it just works to add some tension to this section before I drop the kick out. Let's just do that so we can see that happening. So it kind of adds some atmosphere, a bit of tension here, and then we're using the growl on the drop to keep it rolling and add some energy. I have had a couple of people comment things on YouTube, like show us how to make those sounds from scratch. I don't know how to make that from scratch. Like <laughs> this is how I produce stuff. I use a combination of synthesis, presets, samples, like whatever. I think it's super important to try to have like an open mind and just feel free to get there however you can. You don't have to synthesize everything from scratch, especially if you're a beginner. In my opinion, it's more important to learn about writing music and finishing tracks than how to synthesize every sound. As your skills develop, you can kind of start to focus on different areas and always try to grow your skill set. But I think the healthiest and most productive approach is to have a vision of what you want and get there any way you can. As long as the end result sounds cool to you, sounds unique, and you're happy with it, then that's all that matters. Okay, let's have a look at this pluck sequence. So this is how it sounds. So a cool kind of art black pattern playing over two bars. And you'll notice here we're playing the first and second, and then we're going up to the fifth. A lot of the elements in the track are playing on the root note. So for this, to give it its own space harmonically, I felt it was important to shift it up off the root note. It really helps it to stand out in the track, and it gives it that kind of mysterious feel. So for this, I just used a preset from Ableton, Operator. Then I've added Overdrive and Erosion and Chorus and Echo. So again, another example of starting with a preset but ending with something quite different. That is sound design. So I've shown this in a few videos before, but I'm using this LFO. I've got one set to the frequency and one set to the amount, and that's just modulating the erosion. So if I turn those off, it's just static. Obviously it has some delay automation, which you can hear there, but this is really helping to add some movement as well. The overdrive just pumps up the harmonics. Really nice. Got a glue compressor just to control the dynamics and a chorus, spreading it out. And the echo, which is adding a bit of ping pong to the sides. 21%. Making it nice and spacey and atmospheric. Low cut, LFO tool, side chain it to the kick as we do. So there's a bunch of handy parameters mapped to this. I've turned down the effects and made the sound a bit more plucky than it originally was. And then I'm just automating the filter frequency in this build up. hear there I send it to a big delay. So that's the melodic elements. Now we've got two vocals which are basically just textures. They're just one shots with a bunch of delay and reverb on them. So if I take that off and then play this, it's kind of like a crispy saturated sound in the first place. And then with these, So you can kind of see a theme going on here. Lots of like atmospheric one-shot kind of elements with lots of delay, reverb on them, but then like a really tight, punchy, crispy beat and solid sub bass. Then we've got the same thing again with a different vocal. Adding to the theme of atmosphere, we've got a whole lot of effects. Uh, let's have a look at the snare roll. And then I've got a different pattern here, which just kind of builds up based on the same pattern, but it just kind of builds up over a longer time and then gets to a 16th. Cool, a crash. 
This is a cool one. It's got some delay effects in it. Um, it's from my sample pack, Underground Shades of House. I think I've got, got all of these effects are from Underground Shades of House. So I'll just run through these really quickly. Just like a nice atmospheric kind of thing. You know, a lot of these are really in the background. I've got a atmospheric kind of white noise thing. I've got this reverb clap. So this is happening a little bit before the one. You can see there is the clap and it's happening on the offbeat there. Uh, then I've got this vocal sweep. You can see it's labeled at C minor and I've just pitched it up to D minor. I've used the complex pro algorithm, which allowed the formant to stay roughly the same and just increase the pitch. And then I've got an echo there with some reverb on the echo, which helps to create this wash that overflows out of the break. I've got a noise riser, which is then being sent to some reverb. And the reason it's being sent to the reverb is not doing too much, but it just allows it to kind of wash over and not feel like it ends suddenly. I've got a reverse crash, which is a really long one. I've got this down lifter, just white noise. And another like just noise shot, which is a bit more of an atmospheric one. So in the context. So you can see that some of these effect sounds are being used to accentuate the drops and create kind of tension and release. And some of them like this and this are really like adding to the call and response nature of the whole track. That's kind of like the key to the sound is just layers and layers and layers of atmosphere and call and response, creating like this really, really tight rolling groove. So on one hand, it's been quite a long video. On the other hand, I have breezed over some of these bits is there's just so much going on in this track that I kind of needed to in a way. But like always, there's a link in the description if you want to grab a copy of the project file. So you can go through, check everything out, see the MIDI in more detail, the effects, any automation, that kind of thing. And hopefully that can solidify the learning and help you to understand in a bit more detail what goes into making one of these progressive house tracks. There you go guys, hope you enjoyed that. What do you think? Groovy, right? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this and you're looking for more videos about how to make music in the style of a specific artist, then check out this playlist. There's loads there. Anyway, that's it from me today. We'll catch you next time. Peace.